Now, as we speak, the Israeli armed forces are massing at the border with Gaza, with analysts suggesting that we'd like to see a full-scale ground invasion. Joining me, now, joining me now to discuss that is Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, a spokesperson for the Israeli Defence Forces. Peter Lerner, good to see you. Thank you for joining us t today on, on the Camilla Tomney Show. What are Israel's war aims? Christopher, thank you. Uh, in the aftermath of last week's massacre of Israeli families uh, and the abduction of over 120 people, um, the government has instructed the IDF to destroy Hamas's capability, to destroy and target its leaders, and make sure that they can never, ever again um, target and butcher our babies in their beds. So Israel will withdraw when that war aim is, is completed, if, it, if it's completed? Uh, we, we're determined to destroy Hamas's capability, and we will ag absolutely deliver the goods. But are you fearful that Israel could be, could be engaged in a propaganda war and a prolonged battle here with, with, with Gaza, with, 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 um, with uh, Hamas in Gaza? We're already seeing Hamas's propaganda efforts. That's, an, I think, you know, in, in this region, it, fake news was probably invented. Uh, we are trying to combat that, and Hamas is obviously going to try and, um, I would say, manipulate people's perceptions of what's going on. Yesterday, there was uh, an extensive report of a, a truck uh, uh, and a convoy that was struck supposedly by the Israeli Air Force. I can confirm that this time no Israeli airstrike took place. And from our investigation, it appears that Hamas created the incident completely from A to Z. So they are in an effort. And I'd also say we've, we've seen time and time again that has, Hamas has no problem, no whims in um, sacrificing its own people. You know, when they put rockets in the basements of their homes uh, in Gaza or uh, drones on the roof, drones with explosives on the rooftops of, uh, ha of houses, it just goes to show that they are willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. anybody living in those houses. So I would say this is the current situation. We are combating that uh, and, and most definitely un unprepared that Hamas will ever be able to breach our, our border and come into our communities. And I would say even more than that, we're not prepared that they will govern the Gaza Strip as a staging ground for terrorism against our people. But Peter Lerner, there's a message out today from the Israeli Defence Forces saying that you, you will allow people in Gaza to move south 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Use that window to move south. What happens after 1 p.m.? So we have, over the last, this is day three of the evacuation of people from the north of Gaza Strip to the south, precisely because the people of Gaza are not our enemy, but Hamas is our enemy. So we're differentiating. This is between terrorists and non-combatants. That is precisely what we're doing. You know, what we've seen when we make these announcements, we've seen active operations on behalf of Hamas, both physically blocking people from evacuating. So they want more images of death and destruction as far as they, they're concerned, but, and also sending messages out, telling people to ignore the IDF's instruction. We're actually happy to see that people obviously know that Hamas are not doing them any favors and therefore actually heading down south. So it's an ongoing, this is day three, and we can expect that to continue. Now, our ground operation, uh, if it, and when it does happen, uh, will be in accordance with the law, laws of armed conflict. We will do the best of our operational capability to differentiate between non-combatants and the terrorist organization Hamas and all of its proxies within the Gaza Strip, because there are you know, there, there's the Palestinian Islamic Jihad as, as well that also have forces. And all of these organizations are closely tied with, with Iran. So we need to be prepared for the long haul here. It's not going to be a short operation. And I would say from our perspective, the, the, the government's directive, we are not limited by time. But where will they go? The southern border is full. It's 2.1 million people living in Gaza. Where can they go? They can, they're all going to squeeze into the, the, the southern part of Gaza. I mean, that, that's, that's hardly with, with, in line with humanitarian um, uh, ideas and how others should be treated. No, on the contrary, you know, the, it, the, the worst case scenario is actually that they would stay in where we plan to conduct our, our operations. So they should evacuate to the south where there is places where people can get hold up and take cover for the time being. And indeed, when we finish and complete our operations, we will announce that they'll be able to come back to their homes. You know, the situation on the ground is one where we are changing the paradigm. When Hamas decided to butcher our babies, they broke the rules of the game. 
It was a very stable situation mm. of an under, I would say, a, a, a non-written understanding that Hamas manages the Gaza Strip. Uh, it doesn't conduct a terrorist against Israel. And, and for the last two years, they've been very wary about it. Um, and when they decided to break the rules of the game uh, in such a bit, you know, brutal way, um, we decided to change the game. So Hamas will be removed from Gaza. We are de determined that they will never, ever be able to attack us and our people in their home ever again. How many civilians in Gaza might die in the coming weeks? I hope, you know, I hope there is no need for civilian death. But unfortunately, 1,300 Israelis butchered at the hands of Hamas leave us no choice but to maneuver and operate. Indeed, the civilian arena for any professional military, and the IDF is a professional arena, uh, is a professional military in, the, in this urban arena is extremely challenging. Uh, and that is why we're doing our best in order to differentiate and, and separate and, and indeed instruct people. You know, the types of things that we're doing is drop, dropping leaflets from the sky, sending out text messages, phoning people up in order that they evacuate places where we intend to strike when we understand that they are uh, non-combatant uh, uh, people in, in the area. But yes, Hamas needs to pay. They need to be removed. And I would say in, a, in so much so is that they need to be banished from the realm of existence. Well, 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 Peter Lerner, when will this happen? Is it imminently, like today, tomorrow? Uh, we are, you know, on standby. We are, we've uh, accumulated a, a huge amount of uh, reservists. Over the last few days, we've recruited some 300,000 reservist forces, a, com a company to the regular forces that the IDF has on uh, call at all times. Uh, a, a lot of those of, of that 300,000 are, of course, focused on preparations for a potential ground operation. Uh, if the government instructs us to mobilize, we will be prepared. Um, you know, our preparations are ongoing and, uh, and, and it's important that we know how to do this. Um, I'd also add, though, that some of those reservists that I pointed out, that 300,000, are also currently on the border and the frontier with Lebanon because Hezbollah is also testing us as we speak. And they are. All, I would highly recommend that they actually watch how we are diminishing Hamas's capability to govern in <coughs> Gaza and hunting down their terror, their, their leaders and terrorists, and and striking their their staging grounds. Um, and I would highly recommend that Hezbollah should not cross that line. How likely is it that there might be an incursion in the north from Hezbollah? So I'm aware of uh, several um, cross-border attacks. Uh, even this morning, uh, we've had anti-tank guided missiles fired at our forces. Uh, there are even reports of civilians, um, uh, workers that are con in construction that were uh, injured in this uh, attack. So th there's a, a probability. We hope it won't happen. But as we say in the military, hope is not a method. We need to be prepared yeah. for any eventuality. Just finally, Peter Lerner, do you worry, though, that you might end up radicalizing a whole new generation of people in Gaza to join Hamas to fight against Israel by doing this? I worry for the children of Israel. I worry for the families <laughs> live under that threat of being abducted. I worry for, the, for, the, for the, the young men and women that went to have a party in the desert and never found their way home. Those are the people I am charged to worry for. I would expect the leaders of the Palestinians, Hamas, that they take care of their people, that they uh, use the, their power in, in any Palestinian government should use their power to govern, to create an environment that can flourish and can grow and not build tunnels for terror, uh, rockets for, uh, um, uh, for hate and, uh, uh, and special forces such as the Nukba force and drones for destruction and death. And we won't permit that to be the, the reality for our civilians. And each side has their own responsibility towards their civilians. I would say, you know, we, I, we say with a very, very heavy heart, on the Saturday of 7th of October, the IDF let down the people of southern Israel. This can never, ever happen again. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, thank you for joining us from Israel.